فننظر في حال غلب شيء من النعاس وقال أن أشعر بنفسي أنه لم يخرج من شيء فهذا موضوع صحيح وإذا كان غلب شيء من النعاس وقال لا أدري هل خرج مني أم لا فقد انتقضوا نعم So we look at the person's situation in terms of sleeping if a level of slumber or tiredness or sleep overcomes him then if he says that you know I fell into very light sleep but I was aware of that which was happening around me. I was aware that nothing has been discharged from my body, I haven't passed away, for example, then his evolution is great. But if this sleep and this slumber which has overtaken him, it is to an extent whereby he doesn't know at all that which was happening around him, or he doesn't know and he isn't aware of whether something was discharged from his body, whether he passed away, then in this case we say that he has broken his evolution. And also from those matters which invalidate a person's wudu is eating the meat of camel, specifically the meat of camel. And also a person touching his private part at the front. If a person touches his private part at the front, then it is mustahab. It is I recommend it for him to make ablution. So when we say touching, we mean touching skin upon skin. As for touching it like this, where you have between your skin about, uh, some clothing, then we don't, this isn't must, this isn't touching. And also from those matters which invalidate a person's wudu is a linda. I apostasy, a person leaving the fall of Islam because to a person leaving the fall of Islam then this corrupts or loses all of his actions. Second so wudu. The next thing is the description of wudu, the description of performing ablution. And you know the Bible? That a person intends to make the ablution in his heart. Then a person mentions the name of Allah by saying Bismillah. And then the person he washes his hands three times. And when a person wakes up from his sleep at night, when he wakes up from his sleep of the night, then it's an obligation for him to have wash his hands and his palms three times before he enters his hands into the utensil of water. <laughs> Otherwise, if it's not from sleeping at night, then the washing of the hands three times this is something which is recommended. <laughs> and then a person he takes water and he places it in his right hand. And he enters the water into his mouth and also into his nostrils and then he spits out the water and also and he rinses his nostrils. So after putting water in his mouth and his nostrils, then he blows out the water from his mouth, he spits it out, and also he rinses his nostrils with his left hand. Either this can be done either once or twice or three times. And then after this, the next stage in making wudu is a person who washes his face and he washes his face from the beginning of his hair at the top all the way to the bottom of his chin going down and then from one earlobe to the other earlobe. And also it's mustahab meaning it's highly recommended, not a wajib, but highly <coughs> recommended for a person to use his hands and to uh, wash his beard like with water in his hands like this.
هذا إذا كانت اللحية كثيفة قد تخلي مستحب. So this is if a person has a heavy beard, then it is recommended. أما إذا كانت اللحية خفيفة بأنه الخد أسفل من اللحية قد تخلي هنا واجب. نعم. That's why if a person his beard is naturally very light, such that through his beard a person can easily see the bottom of his skin, for example, then he has to as an obligation uh, wipe through his beard. And again, this wiping of the face or washing the face with water can be done once or twice or three times. And then the next stage is for a person to begin with his right arm and he washes from his fingertips all the way to his elbows, including washing his elbows. So the elbows are included in washing the arm. However, he doesn't then go and start washing his upper arm. So he begins with his right hand and his right arm, and then he moves on to the left arm. And then after this, a person, he wipes over his head. So he does not wash his head with water, rather he wipes over it with wet hands. A person, he begins, he begins with wet hands, wiping the front of his, his head, the front of his head, the top of his head, he takes it all the way to the back and then he brings his hands right to the front again. And then after this, he washes his, uh, he wipes his ears with his fingers. He uses his two index fingers to wash or to wipe the inside of his ears and his two thumbs to wipe over the outside of the ears. <laughs> And it's not permitted for a person to just, as some people do, wipe the beginning of their head. And neither did he wipe over his neck. And then after this, he washes his right foot, including his ankle. And also, he, he washes between each toe with his small finger. And he begins by his right foot up to his and including his ankle, and then his left foot up to and including the ankle. And then after this, after completing the ablution, the person says a person says the supplication which the Prophet used to say. And then he prays. Now, the next subject is the description of how to make a tayammum. A tayammum, yanwai awwalam biqalbi, wa la tilafad bilisam. So, the description of making a tayammum is that a person, he makes the intention in his heart, not on his tongue. Thumma yadabim, dharba wahida bi baatan al-kuffay ala al-arb. Shawam kaanat al-arb. من تراب أو من طين أو من رمل أو من حصى أو من صخر. نعم. is and then the next step is that the person he places the palms of his hands upon the earth once. like he places the palms of his hands upon the earth once. and this can be either earth that he places his hands on can either be soil or it can be sand or it can be تراب رمل or it can be clay, or it can be stones. So he makes the intention in his heart, not upon his tongue. He says, Bismillah mentions the name of Allah. He places his palms once upon the earth. Whether it's soil, or clay, or whether it's uh, sand, 
or whether it's small stones or a large rock. And then a person, he can wipe his hand like this or blow over them once, especially if he has something, some, some soil or some sand or some uh, or something stuck to his hands. He can blow, blow it away or just wipe it like this. And then he wipes over his face. And he doesn't have to now split his beard like this. And then he wipes over the back of his right hand and the back of his left hand. This is what without dividing the uh, fingers. So a person, he makes the intention, says Bismillah, mention the name of Allah, places his hands once upon the earth, and then he wipes his hands or he blows over them. And then he wipes over his face. And the back of his right hand and the back of his left hand. Now the description of a person making ghusl, which is the ritual bathing. So making ghusl, the ritual bathing is of two types. So we have the recommended form of or the perfect manner of making ghusl. And this is the ghusl that the Prophet used to make. And then we have the minimum level of a ghusl that a person can make and this is accepted correctly, just the minimum level. So the ghusl, which is highly recommended, the ghusl, which is the most which is in the most perfect form, the ghusl which the Prophet used to make is is that firstly a person begins by washing his private parts, the front and the back. So the qalbi. And then a person he makes the intention in his heart. And then a person says the Bismillah mentions the name of Allah. And then he starts by making the wudu, the normal ablution that he makes for the prayer. I he washes his hands. And as mentioned, he rinses his mouth and his nostrils and he blows out. And he then washes his face and then he splits between the beard with water and here he has to do it as an obligation. And then he washes his right arm and then his left arm. And then he doesn't wipe over the head, rather he washes the head and he also and he also washes the head making sure that the water is reaching the roots of his hair and using his fin fingertips to wash the roots of his hair and also he washes and wipes his ears <laughs> and then he uses water to wash or shower the right side of his body all of it <laughs> and then use water to shower or to wash all over the left side of his body <laughs> And then after this, upon finishing, he washes his feet, the right, and then the left. So this is the most recommended, the highest, the most perfect form of making ghusl, which is the ghusl of the Prophet And then the second type of ghusl is the minimum level which is correct and accepted. That a person he, ten, he intends it with his heart. You show me. And then he says, Bismillah, he mentions the name of Allah. And then a person, he covers or he showers or, or he bathes all of his body in water, including his hair and the roots of his hair. And, and also rinsing his mouth and his nostrils. 
So if this person he performs the ghusl in this manner, in, sim in simply, you now as the Sheikh mentioned, after the intention of the Bismillah, he just bathes his whole body in water and he washes his mouth and his nostrils, then he has the perfect, you know, then his uh, ghusl is accepted and he can pray any prayer. Yeah, we, a person, I mean, he makes the intention in his heart, Shammi. he mentions the name of Allah by saying Bismillah, he bathes all of his body in water, throws all of his body in water as well as as well as making sure the water reaches the roots of his hair and then rinsing his mouth and his nostrils. So this is what relates to the fiqh uh, of or the descriptions of making wudu and the description of making a tiyamu and the description of a person making ghusl.